Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we are looking at the possibility of turning a very standard plane into a hot rod with very fine tuned adjustments. This is going to be very interesting. Okay, if you know me, you know that I use a lot of standard Bailey pattern simple planes, the uh, type 16 or so hand plane. I, most of mine fall into that category. I don't regularly use bedrocks or other specialty planes with the exception of the Veritas custom plane, which is my all time favorite plane. But one of the big things that makes this just absolutely gorgeous is the fine tune adjustment of this really nice Norris adjuster and the ability to change the angle of the frog and all of the other fit and finish things that really make this nice. It would be really nice if I could take a lot of those ideas and put them into a simple Stanley hand plane. And then one day, a guy by the name of Jeffrey Warshawski contacted me and said, Hey James, I'm working on some other items that may take a standard Stanley hand plane and really soup it up. You may know the name from Hand Planes and Coffee. Um, he's often on there. But he has been making these weird prototypes that can go on to a regular hand plane. Now these are just prototypes, and I kind of want to bounce some ideas off of you guys and see uh, what do you think about them? Is there something that we should go in a different direction or is there some other thing we should look at? But uh, we might be soon bringing these to market. So uh, let's take a look at what we got. Now one of the first things we wanted to look at was a lot of people are going to these really, really thick irons as opposed to the original Stanleys that are good thinner ones. These Lee Nielsen and some of them get really thick. The problem is you put it under the frog and now the yoke can't reach through and connect into the chip breaker. So you're not going to be able to adjust anything. The yoke isn't long enough to reach through the extra thickness of this. The problem is if you make it too long, then it's going to stick up too far and run into your lever cap. So finding that adjustment really depends on the thickness of your iron. Every iron is a little bit thick. So how do you get something that works specifically with your iron? So in that case, Jeffrey came up with a new yoke. And it's exactly like the original yoke, except for the end on it is considerably longer. And it's also a little bit beefier, so you don't have the original thin stock on this. It's a little bit wider, so it'll connect with most of the full width on the chip breaker. But it is long enough that it can go through and into the chip breaker. Now I know I'm putting a number four on a number four and a half, um, but in this case you can see how it can come all the way up through this really thick iron and into this extra thick chip breaker as well. And he's actually making them long enough so all you do is take a file and you file it down to the thickness of your chip breaker. So you can have a yoke that exactly matches your iron and chip breaker set. And if that's not enough, he wants to take it one step closer with this. This is actually a split yoke, and that split allows you to drive a screw down in and adjust how fat it is in this case. Because the problem you have is that a lot of these, like this one particularly, there's a two and a half rotations until everything engages one way, and then two and a half rotations the other way until everything engages the other way. And there's a lot of slop in there. And the slop comes from a lot of different places. Number one, it can be that the yoke is too small and bounces back and forth in that slot. Number two, it can be that the hole is too big and it's got a lot of wobble on that pin. And number three, the round ends here actually aren't quite fit for the hole. There's a lot of movement in that. And so you have all of these points of adjustment and every plane is a little bit different. So he's looking at this one that we can come with the heads that are a little bit larger and they'll fit nice and tight in there so there isn't much slop at all. Or you can get to the point where you need to file them down a little bit to make them fit exactly into what you want. Then they'll come with the hole and the hole can either come too small so you can ream it out to match your pin exactly or it can come with no hole at all so that you have to drill it out and it's actually pretty easy to line it up with your current yoke and drill out the hole and then it comes with the spreader on here so you can make it fit exactly what you want so depending upon how finicky you want and how much slop you want in your nut you can adjust your yoke to match exactly and so this is something that's really in the works and we're trying to figure out 
um, how, what all do we provide in there and what options, and we'd love to hear your options, which ones are the most important to you, the, the knob size, um, having the hole pre-drilled or you drilling the hole yourself, um, the, the splitter nut on this to increase the size in the, the chip breaker. Um, this one is kind of fun, so if you are very picky about the extra slop in here, you can get a yoke that will fit your whole setup exactly so that there's zero slop in there going tight from one side to the other. We have the bed angle. Almost all Stanley planes come with a 45 degree bed angle. Why is that? Because it's the great balance between pushing and durability and the ability to have a high angle on there so you can get a cleaner cut on difficult grain. But if you get really, really difficult grain, sometimes you like to move it up a little bit higher. And that's where my Veritas custom plane really comes in is I can switch out the frog and put in a 55 degree frog or a 50 degree frog as opposed to just a normal 45 degree. So some people have been experimenting with putting wedges under there, even a few sheets of paper or thick stock card stock in there. But card stock is gonna make it really kind of swampy. And so Jeffrey came up with these. It's a 50 degree wedge and a 55 degree wedge. And the 50 degree wedge is really easy because it's thin enough. You can slide it in there, put this on, put your screws on, and now you have a 50 degree frog. It's just a little bit higher than the 40 degree. That little bit can make a big difference when it comes to difficult grain. But sometimes you want it just a little bit higher. And for that, the problem is then the screws aren't long enough to reach down into there. Now you could get longer screws, or you can do what Jeffrey has here with the 55 degree, put it down into there, use your original screws to clamp this down onto the bed, and then you've got two new holes where you can attach your frog. And so that can go in there and gives you a 55 degree angle. You can see how that is a good bit higher, and that will give you far better finish on really difficult grain. So these are kind of fun to play with and they need a little bit of work in the screw sets and sometimes the original screws that come with this aren't quite long enough. So we're kind of working through that, but we'd like to know, um, would you guys want something like this with a 50 degree or a 55 degree or something in between? Or is this something we're just kind of barking up the wrong idea? And the last thing that really annoys people is that when you really want a fine adjustment on this and you make it all the way down to where you need it to be, it just takes like a sixteenth of a turn and that gives you you know a thousandth of a shaving and just that, that tiny bit the thirty second of a turn is the total distance you want this to move and that small amount can often be very difficult to adjust when you need to go back and forth and you want to know uh, is that too much or the no we bring it back here and having a tiny tiny bit of movement on here is kind of annoying and Jeffrey said well, what if we just made this a really fine thread it's a fairly coarse thread but what if we upgraded it and put a very fine thread bolt in there so we can upgrade the bolt inside and the knob as well and we can find out exactly uh, where it needs to be and so now if it needs a 30 second of a turn now it needs a 16th of a turn so you have a lot more control and really being able to dial this in to get the exact shaving you want and we're also playing with different types of the the knobs so we can get them larger we can get them smaller um, the big ones kind of have a problem that they start to run into your hand on some of the smaller planes but the big ones give you a better control over it. Um, and then we're playing with casting as opposed to milling, and then the weight of it. Do we want something that's hollow inside? Do we want something that's full? Uh, there are just so many different options that come into it, and we're kind of playing through different ideas. And we'd love to hear your feedback on what would you want in a knob. So to give you a closer idea on this, you have the knob that can come out, and this screw is a different thread on here. So we can actually take out the old one, and on the end, it's threaded the same as it is in the body. And then back here, it has the finer thread. It also has a standard slot in here, so you can drive it in with a screwdriver and get a nice tight fit in there. Just a lot of interesting options to really soup up a hand plane. So we're kind of playing with this. These are all prototypes. Nothing here is set in stone or nothing here is going to be um, produced and sold just yet. But we're looking at the other options. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on which ones would you want and what are the things that would interest you? Do you just want that longer yoke? Do you want a yoke that's fully adjustable? Do you want a detailed knob so you can have a fine adjustment? Do you like having the pitch control of your frog? All of these things can really soup up a hand plane and make it a fantastic smoother. It kind of ends up being one of those strings out of the sweater. You know, if you give a mouse a cookie, then he's going to want to change the angle on the frog, and then he's going to want to dial in that yoke and make it feel better, and then he's want a knob that has better accuracy. You know, are, are we just making things that are fixing non-existent problems? Uh, quite possibly. Um, you know, let me know. This is kind of one of those things that we're experimenting and playing with and seeing 
what will actually work. And I'd love to hear your feedback on what options would you like to see, uh, what things annoy you that you'd like to see fixed. Um, we'll be working through that and I'll let you know. If they come to market, we will uh, show that. Um, if not, I'll show that too. <laughs> I do need to say a huge thank you to Jeffrey for letting me play with these prototypes. Uh, this has kind of been fun to experiment and, and see the manufacturing side of it. He is doing all the design work and the manufacturing and finding people who can make these. He's looking at all the parts being made in small batch, um, local workmen. And so it's kind of one of those fun things to see, can you make a hand plane do really detailed work even though it's a fairly simple, standard old Bailey plane? And I kind of like that. Being able to take something that's relatively affordable, put a little bit more into it, and being able to get the function you can out of a $500 plane, that could be really useful. So please let me know your thoughts, ideas, concerns, um, comments down below. Let's get this discussion going. If you want to talk about it on the Hive Mind, that's both on Facebook and the Discord server. Links to that down in the description. And on top of all that, I want to say a huge thank you to all the patrons on Patreon, members here on the channel, and everyone who is making this channel happen. I, I say it every week, and honestly, without patrons and members, people have clicked that join button, this would not be here. So thank you to everyone who's scrolling over here on the side, and until next time, have a wonderful day. If you give a mouse a hand plane, <laughs> this happens.